uh, obviously that feels really, really good. Uh, we didn't falter down the stretch, and our kids played with confidence and poise, and, uh, and I think they did a much better job than we did as coaches. I think sometimes uh, we weren't at our best late, uh, but we found a way to win, and uh, you know, really our, the credit really goes to our kids. Uh, you know, A lot of people will talk about Chas hitting that big shot, and that is a big, big shot. But you know, Hallie Bovell to have nine rebounds and the defense that she gave us, and, and you know, Kadrian lost with seven blocks and the defense that she gave us, and then the contributions of Yutsa and Connor and Angela and Libby, uh, you know, Amanda Kalen, anyone that played today gave us significant contributions that led to the win, and uh, you know, a win that's over a very good VCU team. Uh, I I love their team. I think they have. Very good talent, one through 12 or 14, how many they have on their roster. Uh, they just keep bringing players in, and I go, wow, that's a good player. That's a good player. Um, you know, hopefully we'll get a chance that uh, we'll be in the finals together and maybe play again. Uh, but they're a very good team. Very good team. When you guys are down eight with 204 left, is that when you like to have your seniors that are? have that right mindset. I like to roll my dice with these ladies. These are seniors that have been through these battles and they fought through and succeeded for another one. Um, it, it really wasn't that. Um, you know, it was more the fact that who was giving us the hot hand and also who can defend and who was really going to defend hard. Uh, we had a loose ball situation in the lane where no one jumped on the ball and I was very upset about that later in the fourth quarter. And so I went with kids that I knew if the if there was a live, if there was a live grenade on the ground, they were willing to go jump on it and substitute the grenade for a basketball, and that's what I felt like we did. And uh, Hallie, especially, really defended her butt off uh, in those last two minutes, and then you know we made some shots. So I'm just wondering, more even with the last two minutes of uh, your guys, your girls not making the foul shots, uh, possibly going to be able to defend. Um, you know. That was uh, that was uh, Hallie Bovell, and uh, you know Hallie sometimes struggles uh, to put the ball in the basket, and uh, it tells you about the value of everything else that she does when she struggles to score sometimes. That her defense and her rebounding, and, and not just her on-ball defense, but her help defense, is maybe the best help defense I've ever coached in 20 plus years. So you know. We have to do a little bit more offensive, defensive substitutions in those last two minutes to, to put someone else in who could maybe be a more effective scorer offensively. But we also didn't want that clock to stop and because they didn't have a timeout. And so we didn't want that clock to stop. Uh, you know, Kadri was one for two from the free throw line today. Uh, you know, she's about a 65, 70% free throw shooter. Would I love her to be 80? Absolutely. It's not from a lack of trying. Um, she's in here, she makes 100 every day. It's just one of those things where it hasn't gone in for as consistently as we would like. But we, we overall only shot 14 of 21. That was disappointing. Uh, that might be the one disappointing thing uh, all day long. Um, even when you take away uh, you take away Hallie's and you're 14 for 17, that's pretty darn good, actually. That's actually pretty darn good. The players were talking about this when they came and sat down, and Connor at one point said, what the heck happened in this game? It just seems like every time you turned around, Another player came in even with a big stop or a big play or a big rebound or a big shot. The Literally, the work was being spread around for everybody. And we talked about this after the Dayton game when you mentioned how you know you wanted to ignore everything that happened before that point. And since then, it's three or four, and it seems like everybody continues to chip in, whether it's the big plays or the little plays also. Yeah, and I think, I think it's six of eight um, as, as well. And if you look at the two losses that we had, you know, those are all one, one possession games. And... Uh, I told the team after the St. Joe's win that that was probably uh, my most favorite victory of the year. Not because we beat St. Joe's and St. Joe's, but they listened. They listened to each other. They listened to us. They trusted each other, and they trusted us. And they really pulled for one another. And there was multiple contributions from everyone uh, beyond the starting five, beyond the, the, the seniors. And everyone was happy, genuine happy happy that we got a victory and uh, no one was worried about their minutes or, or their shots and and I think that's really gone away I think it's really gone away over the last eight games and we've become a very unselfish group and when we're unselfish and we embrace physicality we're really dangerous 
40 minutes out of Libby. She led everybody. She started every game. It seems like VCU was trying to really pressure her and test her, and she kept finding ways to get past them. I imagine there's a lot of confidence in her right now when you're in. I th yeah, I mean, I think people look at April. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm channeling. She's kind of got an April Robinson feel to her. Uh, there's, there's some April Robinson in her, and that's quite a compliment. Um, but I think people look at Libby and they and they kind of see a slight kid, and uh, I, I, I want to be very frank. I think they see a, a slight white kid who plays point guard, and they think that they can pressure her, and they don't realize how athletic that she really is. She's a really good athlete, and people don't recognize that until you play against her. She's quick. She's got quick hands, and north south, she's fast with the basketball, and uh, you know. I said in the locker room, she's like a walking near triple double. Um, you know, she's always right around 10 points, eight, nine, 10 points a game. She had six rebounds today and only three assists. But I mean, what more can you ask from your point guard besides maybe one missed assignment defensively and to have nine and six points and you know three assists with one turnover with all that pressure and, and such good defense overall? Um, Libby Bazelak is a really good basketball. A really good basketball one thing VC really tends to do well is the offensive rebounds and they got nine but if you look at it from take the team rebounds away you guys got them in offensive rebounds and really limited their opportunities just what does that say about the effort your lady showed um, you know in practice for the last two weeks we keep a chart and we run if we have more than three no talks no box outs layups given or layups not made. So we're, we're tracking all those in every single drill that we do, and we haven't run a whole lot. Um, I was disappointed on a couple possessions where we gave up layups without fouling people. We're, we're not giving anybody an easy bucket. You're going to earn it at the free throw line. Um, from a block out standpoint, you know, when we went into halftime, the rebounds were 20 to 10. And so I obviously was not very happy about that. Um, and we came out in the second half and we out-rebounded them 26 to 20. And very frankly, the, the, the big Russian kid, and I, Pasha Goriva, I mean, that kid's a very talented kid. She's a high major kid. She's legit 6'6", and she can move. Um, you know, for her to have eight rebounds, I actually feel pretty good. And that kid has a lot of ability. Um, but, uh, you know, they go to the glass hard, you know, a team that runs dribble drive, which has kind of always been our kryptonite, you know, being able to stop the dribble drive. Uh, I thought we did a good job there, and we identified some things that if we get an opportunity to play them again, that will really benefit us also. Um, but, uh, you know, I feel really good about how we rebounded, especially the second half. This is a team that in VCU that defends well. They limit the three-point makes. They limit, they keep the shots low. Just how much... Does that impress upon you when you see them in the scout? And how do you prepare for that? Maybe teaching yourself and your ladies patience and no. getting the most out of each possession? No, it's actually the exact opposite. Okay. Um, when you play a team that wants to press and press you for 40 minutes, a lot of times they don't like to be pressed. And so we didn't press for 40 minutes, but we pressured enough. Um, and, you know, I don't miss me, my assistants run, do the scouts. I worry about us. And worrying about us, I felt. You know that we were going to get the quality looks that we needed, and, and we were able to knock them down. Um, I, I don't go in with trepidation that you know, VCU's first in the league, and you know what are we going to do? Um, you know, I had a couple people say to me this week, "Well, aren't you ready to pull the upset on Saturday or something to that effect?" And I said, "Upset? Okay, they're first in the league, but we're really good too. You take away you take away the early part of our season, and we're pretty good, and and I believe that we are." And I think we match up with just about anybody when our minds are focused and we embrace physicality and, uh, and, and being able to guard. I know we've asked a lot about the seniors. This is t the next game that you have here is the is senior day. It's a, it's a week from today. Just I, the obvious question is what have these four seniors meant to you and just the impact they've made on Duquesne on and off the court? Well, their impact will be measured by us winning games and our back is against the wall we need to win the rest of our games. And so it'll be up to our seniors to lead us to that. And that's the two regular season games, the playing game, and the conference tournament. There's no reason why we can't win this, and our back is against the wall. If we want to get to 20 wins, which is the standard at Duquesne, 
if we want to get to postseason play, our back is against the wall. We have to win. And so there's, a, there's not an air of desperation at all. I think actually it's an air of relief and enjoyment now. Whereas earlier in the year when we weren't playing as well and we weren't as cohesive, uh, it, it was not a lot of fun. And now, you, as you saw the three kids that were in here, it's a lot more fun. And uh, the air of relief has gone away. You know, we've gotten some wins in a row. We've won a late close game like this. It's more of an air of confidence and an air of, you know, we've got this. And so um, I think we're going to be a very dangerous team as we go into March. And uh, I like our chances. You especially like your chances, especially since the school is building its home seat. Absolutely. Um, anytime you, the road to the NCAA tournament goes through your home arena, it's a huge, it's a huge opportunity for us. And, and I don't like to use the word huge or extreme or uh, very good. Like it's a huge, it's a huge deal um, because you know we know these rooms, we know this floor, we know this city, we know the restaurants we need to go to, we know where we need to go for our practice times because we can't practice here but an hour, so we know where we're going to go. Uh, it's a, it's a big advantage. And uh, I really appreciate you know, Duquesne University and our athletic director, Dave Harper, with making the bid. And, and Megan uh, Jarling, who's, a, who's our uh, marketing athletic director, um, she did a great job with that bid to allow this to happen, for us to win this bid. And so, you know, really kudos to go to them. And I, I can't thank them enough uh, because it puts us in a position that is a little bit, it puts us in a position to give us a little slight advantage. It's, there's a little slight advantage when you're at home. Especially um, the possibility of um, ending the uh, aging Colombo Center era of this new building and style for the renovations. You're telling me. I, I think it'd be pretty awesome if we, you know, and hey, like, I think we should daydream about that. We need to focus on George Washington, and we do that. But what's wrong when you're, you know, you're driving home, take two or three minutes and think about that confetti raining down on you as we shut down the Palumbo? I want our kids to think about that. You know, you, you want to have them to have that goal and that aspiration. And that's realistic for us. And so uh, I, I want them to think about that for a couple minutes a day. But the vast majority of their day, they better be worried about George Washington. Thank you for supporting women's basketball. I appreciate you being here.